Come correct or don't come at all. This is the Hard Zog Hustle Podcast. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And we're talking about the hustle, strategy, and mindset you need to win in the areas of your finance, your purpose, and your future. You know what I'm saying? If you have heart and you want to learn how to activate the power of your hustle, then this is the podcast for you, baby. For you, baby. Congratulations. And now, your host. Anthony and Janelle Gahartzog. This is how it should be done. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Hartzog Hustle Podcast. My name is Anthony Melvin Hartzog, and wow, you are the full the full government, the full social. That's I'm in a social mood today. I'm in a social mood. Okay. So what's been up? What's been happening? Wow, I'm waiting on my introduction here, people. You are. You can introduce yourself sometimes. All of a sudden. 24 episodes in, now I'm introducing myself. Well, I'm Janoka Hartzog, everyone. Maybe 25, 26, who knows? When this, when this will be released. <laughs> you are Whatever. the co-host of the Hartzog Hustle podcast. Yes. You, intro, if you guys are new here. If you're new here, uh, welcome. We are Anthony and Janoka, also known as the Heart Chimony. Um, Stop right now and leave us a review. Go ahead and give us some stars. Leave a comment. Subscribe to YouTube. Share. All of the above. Um, yeah, that's what I got for that part. Very important. If you guys didn't know, we have a seven figure cleaning business. If you're interested in learning how to start scale a remote cleaning business up to six and seven figures, tap in cleaningbusinessuniversity.com. They sponsor all of our podcast episodes. <laughs> they sponsor our lifestyle. They sponsor our, our life in general. So shout outs to cleaningbusinessuniversity.com. Yes. Um, so what's, but- what's been up? Talk to me. What's Starts been up? People. So, if you didn't know, Anthony retired in December of twenty. What year in twenty twenty one? So then he was trying to get his groove, but then we had the baby. So we had the baby February twenty eighth, essentially March, if you will. Um, and then I was off with him for three months, and I just returned back to work this past Monday. How was it um, being out of work? So you're out of work, but you have a newborn. So you're, <laughs> it's kind of like, it's a different type of work happening. But also we have um, my aunt here and my grandmother here that's been assisting. So I don't think we got the full picture as if we were by ourselves. Way different when you Way got Way different. Um, and we have a night doula that has been helping us. So it's been great. Actually, we've been getting sleep from the beginning. Really Art. can't complain about that. It's been a great experience. With the newborn phase, obviously at the beginning there was some like waking up three, four hours uh, with her, but it's been good. And with me being off and going through the newborn phase and having my aunt here, we were able to do things in the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. So we went to the mall, movie theater, or if we need to record a podcast or we had meetings and stuff, we could do it and say, hey, can you watch the baby during this time? I went to the mall on I forgot what day Monday or, Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. I didn't know that stores don't open till like eleven o'clock at the mall. But that's just Dallas. Dallas opens up late. I, I like, didn't know the stores yeah. don't open that early, so I was in the mall waiting for the stores to open. But it felt good being in the mall by myself and not knowing, not knowing uh, that, knowing that no one else is in there trying to get whatever I'm trying to get. So that was that's a good feeling. But yeah, so just being able to do things in the middle of the day. Tony always says like Target. He's like you can't go to Target after four, four five, o'clock. Five. It's a mess. Um, like going in the middle of the day, so. You know, it was a break from the nine to five, but it still was a work with a newborn and we kind of never stopped with our businesses. I think we took like a two week break, but then we kind of really jumped back in. I was trying to utilize the free time that I had. I guess so, the time was free. It was different type of free, but it was available. It was different type of free. Yeah. So right now you are back in the saddle, as we would say. The way a man people work. <laughs> <laughs> What Dr. Umar would say. If you guys didn't know Dr. Umar, he is a uh, just Google it. The you, doctor, you Dr. Dr. Umar, joke. and he says, uh. "Well, you don't need white man paperwork or something." <laughs> I, I don't know what it was, but people but, use that for everything. Like yeah, you don't need white man paperwork. Um, it's a joke. Don't cancel us for that. Uh. So you are back at work. How's that? Back been? at work. Um, and I tell so you how it's been for me. What my job, what my job allows <laughs> is a uh, transition period back to work. So, you know, you do the 40 hours. They allow you to work 20 hours, you get paid for 40. You decide with your manager how you work them 20 hours. So I was like, I'm going to do 8.30, 12.30, get off, and um, go about my day. Yep. And that's the first day, IT issues, whatever, whatever. So the that first day kinda, was a wash? 
Yeah, at first it was a wash, and it's been kind of slow, really. The holiday weekend is coming up, Memorial weekend is coming up, and so I have, like, the Friday off, the Monday off, so no full groove of things until, like, next week, Wednesday. Yeah. Is when I'll be fully in it. Um, I also have a second job that I knew coming back that I was going to get rid of, um, just because it just takes too much out of me emotionally. So I was like, I'm, I, I know I'm getting rid of it. But now I'm like... So by the time this episode airs, you'll have put in your resignation. For I would have put in the resignation by the time this episode airs. But my thought was... So you still got one more job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my thought was that they gave me... This other job gave me a month for maternity leave. So I would work a month to give them that back and yep. then leave. But now I'm still going to do that. But I had planned to submit the resignation two weeks in and then go on. But now it's been day four, and I'm like, I'm submitting it tomorrow on day five. <laughs> and I'm submitting it tomorrow on day five. So just the conversation. So then I will just have one job, okay, one one job. And the com- we've had conversations around what that looks like and how long, if anything, would I stay at this other job. This is a job I've been with for seven years. I think it's going to be seven years in July that I've been with for like seven years. And so it's like, am I going to let it go? If I do, when? Yeah. What does that look like for us when it comes to insurance? Because there is insurance out there for entrepreneurs. I know it's the first thing that people say, well, what are you going to do about insurance? Pay for it, basically. (laughs) Yes, it's pricier than if I'm with a job, but I'm an entrepreneur and I can afford that. Um, And then if I leave, what does that mean for us? So we came up with this topic. We're like, the third question is like, should I retire? So, what does? Well, ref- before you get into that, you said sure. you said you said how has it been the first week back? You said you know how it's been for you. So say how it's been for you. So the challenge with us is that we have mm-hmm. multiple businesses, and mm-hmm. we both run these businesses. And yes, I may do most of the work, but a lot of the decision making has to be done by us as a cohesive unit. I can't just go and make decisions on my own. So it requires us to be available at some times. And I don't, now the problem is you work Mm -hmm. eight to five and I work whenever I want to work. So I have to wait until like going back to when we first started these, these side hustles and businesses after hours. So you worked, we worked eight to five, nine to five, and we worked from five to 10 on the businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have to wait till after work to work on these businesses, but I have to wait for you Mm -hmm. to work on these businesses. I think what happened was because when he retired, we knew that he was the only one retiring. So we knew that I would always be working until five o'clock and he would always have to wait, right? I guess. Yes, yes. Okay. (laughs) But I think the taste of the three months that, um, the three months that I just had off. And us doing things together and being able to go there gave you a taste of like what life could be like if I didn't work. And now it's like, oh no, I, I don't want to. I don't want to wait for you after five o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> if if we if I have eight hours, if I have a full eight hour day to do whatever I want in what order, so you could do it in four. I could do it in four. I could do it in three. I could do it in one. Yeah. I now have to wait. For an example, we have we have a virtual assistant business. So if we could have these meetings during the day, we would have the meetings during the day. But we have to wait until 4.30. We have a person that helps us out with social media and, mm-hmm. and the podcast and stuff like that. We have to meet with them after 5 o'clock because it started off because of you, honestly. I can meet whenever I want. Mm-hmm. So now even coaching calls, like we had a coaching call today that you couldn't be on, um, which I felt was very impactful because – most of the coaching group didn't show up, so we could have had the whole hour to ourselves. Mm-hmm. But you couldn't show up because you had a meeting during the day. Mm-hmm. Um, even our other coach that we work with, like we had, to, we have three o'clock meetings on Mondays. You can't have the meeting because you got a everyday meeting with your your manager at work. So it hinders us in business and even personal life. Like even with Alani, like since you work now, we have to figure out. All right, your work day is less flexible than mine. And her day in general is just her day in general. It's, you're gonna you're gonna work it's around Lonnie's it. world. It's Alani's world. <laughs> so I gotta work around her and your schedule now. Yeah, yeah and, fit, have, and fit my schedule in there somewhere. That happened on the first day of work, or maybe Tuesday. I don't remember. Um, that he had went to the gym. I start work at eight thirty. 
You never know when Alani's getting up. <laughs> really, really right? She's gonna get up. It could be eight, it could be ten. At this point, she's not on the strict schedule yet. She's not even three months yet, so we don't expect that. Um, and she woke up that day, I think, like eight oh five, which is like okay. But now you gotta. She's she's waking up. You gotta change her. You gotta feed her. And he's at the gym. And I'm like, you gonna be back by eight thirty, right? Because okay. I start working okay. at eight thirty. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm, just, <laughs> I'm moving a little faster now. I definitely had to move fast. It was like eight fifteen or something like that. I definitely had to move and fast. And it's like, oh yeah, we still have my aunt here, so she can help. But she was already like making breakfast. So you know what I mean? It's kind of like she's already doing some of that. So at that point, I'm like, all right, Alani, you coming to work with me? Just come on, we scooting upstairs, um, going to work, putting the keyboard in, you know, and so figuring out that way. I'm taking off this Essentia. I have been said that. Yo, we don't get sponsored by them until they sponsor us. Not a. I know. I love. I know. I love their water, but nah. Not a dime and nickel. I'm gonna have to remember that every time, though. Yeah. Every time. So now what do I do with this? Yo, you know what's the best thing about being That's in like ASMR for people. ASMR. Best thing about podcasting at home is that I can do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yes, you have this. You have to schedule. I have to schedule my life around you and yeah. Alani, and At and it's been moment. it's been a challenge. So with you going back to your job, mm-hmm. I feel like well, now we have to schedule. You have two jobs. You're going to leave one, which is fantastic. But now figuring out, all right, are you going to leave the other? The biggest hindrance is the insurance. So we're speaking mm-hmm. to um we're speaking to our insurance agents. And they're going to get us some quotes on what insurance companies that they recommend for entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. That was Is that the biggest thing for you, insurance? That's kind of that, what I could use as a crutch right now is the biggest thing. <laughs> so we, we're pretty much focused on insurance. And once the insurance comes, you could dip. So, But also, you being at your job for so long, do you feel like that's still, like your identity still rolls with that job at some point? Too? I don't think it's the job. I think it's the title. The role? No, the role. Um because, but then it, 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 so if you don't know, I'm a mental health therapist, right? So it's like, I got my master's for this, got my, um, I got my master's for this. I paid $68,000 plus in loans for this. You definitely did. Uh, we're debt free, so we don't have any loans. Um, well, no student loans, we got a house. Um, so I did all of that. And so to let go of that feels like, was it for nothing, but I'm licensed in New York and Texas, and you would always need therapists. The same way you always need doctors and nurses, you're always going to need therapists. So I can always work again or work in a contractor role. Like I already know a company that I can work in a contractor role if I need, if I want that urge to do that type of work. So I don't think I'm attached to the company anymore as much as I was versus just the thought of like, what am I going to do if I'm not working the nine to five? But even though I saw the life, like for those three months, it felt good, whatever the case may be. So then it became the conversation. We had this conversation today where it's like, okay, if you're not working, then are we not going to hire because we hired a nanny? Are we not going to hire the nanny? I'm like, absolutely. We will hire that nanny. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't, I've never communicated <laughs> that. I just want to be full time at home with Alani. Um, full time mom. Full time work from home. I'm doing that. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just not something that I feel like I want to do at this point. And I don't think because you hire a nanny, that mean doesn't mean you're a full time mom. Yeah, that's true. Not mom. I mean, like working with, like being with her. Obviously, I'm a mom. Like, doesn't I mean, change. You take off two hours. <laughs> does that make you part time? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, but I still want her to have those opportunities because we do still have businesses. So because I'm not working a nine to five, doesn't mean I'm not doing anything. Right. So what would your day look like then? That was the thing that 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 uh, Tony had said. He, what did you say? And I'm like, that's not gonna be. That's not always gonna be my life. I think I had said something like, I'm not always gonna work on the businesses. And you were like, why not? And I'm like, because I don't always want to work on the businesses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if I want to um, take on that contractor world, or if I just want to sit down and watch SVU all day, that is my prerogative. That's what I should be able to do as an entrepreneur. That's yeah. why I chose this lifestyle. I didn't know how you felt about that. You're like, oh, you don't want to work in a business all the time. <laughs> well, I chose to be an entrepreneur so that I could take midday naps. So that, right. was, that was it for me. Right, exactly. So I think we that would be an ongoing thing for us, making sure that we're both aligned as to, I think, kind of what your expectation of it is. Because mm-hmm. I even tell you all the time, like, you come in here, you're in here eight hours most of the time. I'm not in here eight hours. 
<laughs> maybe maybe today it was close to eight because we had we were, it's podcast recording okay. day. Most of the time, I said mm, so. Eighty percent, eighty percent of the time, I have to be the one to remind you. You don't got to walk into that office. Well, <laughs> well, the office is now the studio. So my point is that you your thought of what entrepreneurship looks like, and you're probably just still getting in the groove of it. Is probably one thing too. And my view of what it looks like is completely different. Yeah, I'm sure you... And that will be <laughs> cause tension and friction because you're going to be expecting A, B, and C, and I want to do... X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. That is the thing that would probably be an issue. Yeah, because I may wake up in my zone. Like, some days I wake up, like, all right, I'm in my zone today. I'm on fire. Things are happening. And you may not wake up in your zone. You may not wake up in any zone. zone. <laughs> You may not even have a zone. That I don't day. got a zone. No, oh, no. You may just not even have a zone that day. You're just like, yo, I just want to lay in bed and watch SVU. I'm like, yeah, just- you can't just want that for yourself. I'm like, I can. That's the thing. You can. So that was like the question of like, should I retire? I was feeling like, or I'm feeling like, once I let go of this one job, mm-hmm. then it would alleviate some additional stress that I sometimes feel. Yeah. Um, but then I feel like those times that I want to do certain things or we want to be like, we don't got to work from home, like in the house, we can be in New York or we can be other places. We can work from Puerto, you know, we can work from other places to get an Airbnb and stay there. And I think that that is what's going to cause issues because I got to request time off. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to have to request time off. I want to just go. What was right? he trying to do when you got to take time off? You got to request time off. Yeah. I got to request time off. Just no, I said, what was he, what was he about to do? I'm not sure. I want to go to a conference and oh, I want yeah. to go to a conference and, and I'm like I just returned back to work. And it's a two it's a two day conference in and, the of the week. and it's in the middle of the week. Number one, how can all of these people just go to this conference? Because they're sh- taking off. They're taking off. So you can't take off because you just got back to work, yeah. which is a challenge mm-hmm. for us in in the entrepreneur. I'm trying to figure out the spacing with the with the yeah. sound and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so if you watch this on YouTube, you may see me moving the mics and stuff like that. But they could just take off because they've been at their jobs, but you can't take off because you just got back from maternity mm-hmm. leave, mm-hmm. which is frustrating because I'm sure we could go there, we could network, we could probably make... It's not even about the time off. It's not even about the... about the uh, Even if you took unpaid time off, it's not even about the leave. It's just the, about the experience that we're going to miss out on because both of us can't be there. Which I and encourage you to go. I know that. but I'm And from the, from the job standpoint, from the business standpoint, it's just like, all right, well, we can't go because you got to work. And we may miss out on more opportunities because of that. It's true. Let's say another opportunity comes up and it's like, we got to go. And you can't go. When you were when you were off, what did we do? We went to another podcast on like a we Tuesday. Po- we, oh, yeah, on a Monday. We, we were in and out. In we DC. went to a podcast Monday. in D.C. in and out on a Monday with no Had problem. lunch with family and friends. That's the life. I that was to- a good life. It was. A good, I mean, you know, I love a, a pick up and go. Yeah, so <laughs> we were just like, able to book a flight next week. We were able to go. But now you can't do that because you got you to gotta take the time off. You gotta rec- no, you gotta go through the process. So you gotta request the time off. You request Your manager you has to receive the time off request. Then they have to approve the time off request. And then that's if they approve it. If they don't approve it, what happens now? Are you one of those people that say, Well, I was gonna leave anyway? It's already booked. So I've never gonna- had a vacation not approved. If now you back and they miss you, <laughs> they may start So I don't know that. that they may feeling. start Denying those requests now. Well, you just came back from a three month leave, especially if she didn't have a baby. She may she may have assumed that it may be an easier time to the be. The funny off. thing about it is that my manager didn't expect me to come back. Remember there's a I reason for saying, that. She kept saying to me, "If you decide not to come back, it's okay. If you there's decide re- that you want to stay with your family, it's okay." And I'm like, "I'm gonna come back. I'm coming back." Well, there's a reason that they they said that they might have listened to this podcast or saw you, <laughs> you on Good Morning America or something like that. So America. now the question is, if they deny you leave, are you going to be one of those people that's like, well, I'm taking it. I was taking leave. I already booked it. I'm actually already there. So I actually technically can't. I feel that way because <laughs> I just feel like what would be the reason that I would be getting denied? There yeah. is, but it would be no like, there's no reason that I would get denied. I mean, it's yeah. not like I'm not doing my work. You know what I mean? Like, what is the reason that my, my request is being denied? So Because they want to. That's what I mean, jobs that's, do I mean, sometimes. That's very true, but. Sometimes they're like, yo, 
I don't mind the move for you to go on leave. I want, <laughs> you, to move I want you to be here with me. So that may be a reason why they just deny your leave. So that's one of the challenges that we face right now with yeah. you being at your job. And everyone in every coaching personal aspect is asking, like, why is Shinoka still why at your job? Why are you still there? Why are you still at your job? Why am I still there? And then it's like, well... I- no, at one point I had said that it was part of my identity. I definitely was like, it's part of my identity. But I think being off for those three months, even though it was, you know, during the transition with having Alani and coming back and it's only the first week, I'm like, what am I doing here? Exactly. You got to figure it <laughs> even out. Even though, like, I mean, our money has grown, meaning, like, our businesses have done better, kind of basically since we've had her, but I was still in a position to leave before her technically. Um, But now, especially it's like time is precious with her and I'm sitting up here while she downstairs doing whatever for what? Like I'm not making an impact. (laughs) I'm not doing anything. And you're just there. I'm I'm just here. And you're just there to be there. And especially when you get to that point in your career where you feel like you're not fulfilled anymore, it may, may you, maybe you're just not fulfilled or maybe you just like, you want to do something new. But then I have to ask myself, when's the last time you were fulfilled? And how many people are really fulfilled at their job? I'll fulfill for a while at my job. How long? I don't know. You was there for nine and a half. I was when there for nine and a half years. I was probably fulfilled for six, six, seven, six, seven. I think the last two years was just a yeah. blur. I think the last two years has been a blur for everybody. Number one. That's true. But number two. I'll probably say the last two years, if, if COVID didn't happen and things were normal, I think I'd still be in the same position I'm in now. Because you get to the point where you just feel like there's not much more you could do. So our conversation that we had before I left was, are you sure? What's the timeline? And what will you do when you leave? For you or me? For me. Uh-huh. So it would be the same question. Yeah. And my timeline, I think, was we had discussed was possibly end of this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then the question is, is it going to be the end of this year? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. No, that's the uh, definitely... Is it going to be the end of this year or is it going to be before that? So these were the same that. conversations we were having behind the scenes when mm-hmm. we were talking about me. Mm-hmm. So it was good that we're able to bring it to the to forefront light. and bring it to the light so that people can see what the transition is. And they'll be able to say, oh, you spoke about that back in, back in whenever, and it's happening mm-hmm. um, versus us trying to... We did it, and everyone was like, oh, yeah, I didn't know that was happening. It's like, you're not supposed to know, number one. Mm-hmm. Well, number two, now you could just see the transition, and it's not just like a run-of-the-mill conversation where we're like, well, we just we just left our jobs. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. Should I retire? It's like, and, and when I do what that looks like for us, like really structuring our day. Because, like, a lot of times we get on a conversation with our business coaches. She was like, did you structure, did you figure out what you're doing with your day yet? And he's like... I'm just getting things done. <laughs> things get checked off. I'm getting things done. There's really no like exact structure besides that nap. Two, two, three o'clock come around. You're like, I'm out. Yeah. I'm going to go take that nap. It's been a little less with Alani. If she's down, if she's not down, depending who's watching her. Um, but that is one thing you're consistent with. Yeah. But I think having some type of schedule would be definitely good for me. Of whatever that is. If that's making sure the gym is before 12 o'clock. If that's taking her to music class. If that's, you know, all those things. <laughs> you keep talking about this music class like like you're musically inclined and you won't pass I don't off, need to be musically you inclined. You pass off those jeans to her No, or you take the kids and they just like bang the stuff. They bang <laughs> I'm not taking her to bang on steel pans. She could do that downstairs. It's not steel pans. They have instruments and stuff for them to play with. I'm not taking her to like piano lessons. I mean like the gymboree and that type of stuff they to got, the kids. Listen, <laughs> when I was in high school, let me show you my gym. We high had, school. I'm talking about a newborn. You talking about high school? We had we had music class in high school. Um, I, I went to a musical school. I had musical class in high school. I, I didn't go. But at lunchtime, I was on that table. Is that the beat? Do you guys know what beat he's trying to do? I was on that table during lunch, if banging you know the beat. You shouldn't be listening. banging out the beats on the table. So. I got a little bit of musical genes in okay, me. Okay, whatever. So Valani's going to get that. My point is yeah, swimming important. lessons, this, that, and yeah. that we want her to be doing. So right now, if that's the case, I'd have to take her or the nanny have to take her or it has to wait till after 5 o'clock. Exactly. That is not ideal for anyone's lifestyle to have to wait to enjoy your entire day. It's ideal uh, for some people's lifestyle. It's not ideal for the heart of household. 
No, definitely not. That's what that's what you mean. So we gotta figure we gotta figure out what that looks like. What yeah. your day looks like. What the timeline is. What the plan is. And everything revolves around this insurance. This mystical insurance. I don't know what this is about. But everyone gets so afraid of insurance as it's like it's like the big scary thing. Like I can't leave my job because what happens with insurance? Okay, yes, insurance may be hard to come by by some people, some states, some countries, whatever it may be. But that can't be the only thing holding people back from leaving their job. The first thing they ask, what you going to do about insurance? Yeah, because people get sick. The thing, reason probably, you're probably not thinking like that because you're a young... Young strapper. Young strapper. <laughs> young strapper and you are healthy and well, so you're not thinking longevity. But if someone is 45 or 50, that's a big deal. But even in general, you never know what will happen with us. So insurance is a big deal, but I agree that it shouldn't um, <clears throat> hold us back from moving forward. Yeah, so we get the insurance figured out, and at the end of the day, we got our businesses, so we'd be focusing on that, and then maybe... And the growth of that, and we know that, too. Yeah, and then maybe you find something that you enjoy doing outside of our businesses that's, like, exciting for you. I don't know what that would be. What would that be? What do you think? I have no idea. I enjoy working out. All right, that can't be the only <laughs> thing that you do outside of our businesses, because the business I enjoy doing, so I can't say that's the same thing for you. I enjoy working out and then spending time with Alani. Um, as that? she grows, it's going to be different things or different things happening, so I can't say exactly what. I said, what do you enjoy? It has nothing to do with Alani. That is. I enjoy being with her. What is something that you enjoy personally for yourself outside of Alani? Working out. <laughs> <So you can't, laughs> traveling. Maybe, maybe you'll find some hobbies. Okay, maybe you start traveling on your own. Maybe you start doing like some solo trips or something like that. Wow, you let me, you let me solo to travel? There was a thread on I'm not that. A solo travel person. There was a thread on that on social media about everybody should do it. They said, "Oh, would you allow your woman to solo travel?" Absolutely not. Why would you solo travel? <laughs> you just said <laughs> that's you true. just said for me to solo travel. Absolutely not. Why Absolutely you... not. I would not allow you to solo to solo travel. It's a family. We a family. Why would you be solo traveling? So nah. solo traveling. I want to. I want to find out more about myself. Do that. I don't want to do. It. I'm not a solo travel person. But that's, that's kudos dangerous. to those that to those that do it. But. It will be an ongoing, ongoing conversation for us of if I should, when I should retire. Not if, because I will. Let, let's be clear on that. What you, what you guys right think? Away. What are your thoughts? Let us know. Um, is she just, is she just scared? Let us know. If she, just, you think she's just scared? That may be it. Okay, what's the tea? Let's see what somebody's gonna say. She may be just scared. What's the tea? Let us know. Let us know what your thoughts are. Um, anything else you want to cover? That's it. I want to cover when, that. When you have a potential retirement episode? Uh, yeah. And then we'll do a real one when it happens. Um, <laughs> when, <laughs> that's my post. Uh, to make sure, you know, first of all, just thank you guys for tuning in. We are in the 20s, 30s of our um, podcast. It flew by, first of all. We're definitely trying to do at minimum 52 consistently, meaning a full year of podcast episodes. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Thank you for rating us. Make sure that you share, comment, subscribe, all of the above. And also, we hit 10,000 downloads. So that's a okay. that's a huge milestone. So that's, uh, that's, that's amazing. So shout out to you guys. If you guys didn't know, we own a seven-figure cleaning business. If you're interested in learning how to start, scale a remote cleaning business without ever having to clean a single house, make sure you tap in for some income outside your nine to five so that you can retire just like me. And maybe Ooh, Janoka. Ooh, the shade of it all. <laughs> maybe Janoka. You're from Atlanta Housewives. <laughs> Appreciate you guys being here. Peace. Thank you. This has been an episode of the Heart Talk Hustle Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to rate and review this podcast on your favorite listening platform. And follow Anthony and Janilka on Instagram at The Heartrimony. That's T-H-E-H-A-R-T-R-I-M-O-N-Y. Keep hustling, baby. Keep hustling, baby. Get that money. Get that money.